What is happiness to you? The reason why I ask is because lately I've been feeling this pull calling me into the simplicity of happiness and really taking the time to explore what happiness feels like to me and within my own body. To also acknowledge the deep truth that one, happiness is my radical responsibility and it is my duty and my right to explore this feeling with the time that I have here. And two, the happiness that we seek is always within reach. It takes having an encounter with the divine source, with divine happiness, to be in an awareness that it is always accessible to us at any time. Welcome to the Ron Hap Podcast, where we get real and then some. I am your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will discuss topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind, so we can accomplish our goals from a healed and open place together. So, let's get started. I'll be honest, in this new age craze of self-help, self-development, and entrepreneurship, where everyone everywhere is telling you exactly what you need to do to somehow feel better, do better, and make more money, in the midst of wanting to be helpful, I was unknowingly pushing this agenda of productivity on myself, and maybe others, because this is slash was the present energy that I was in for the past six months. While I wanted others to get to a version of themselves that wakes up genuinely happy and filled with a sense of pride for having the bravery to live a purpose-driven life. And I'm not saying that productivity isn't helpful or needed at a different stage in your journey. But because I was driving productivity so consistently... Later on, I could recognize after being brought into this wave of happiness, just how most of my doings were absent of something so pivotal in the manifestation process. And that is the simplicity of happiness and a childlike joy and curiosity and good faith and overall fun with what I was doing and the creations that I wanted to bring into the world, and all of the things that I wanted to attract. I had to question my own happiness because there was a part of me that tied my happiness to the level of productivity I had in the week. There was this disconnect that I had with my own happiness because I just genuinely felt that, that because there was so much that I'm working on or towards, that happiness will come simultaneously once I got there. Happiness was after all of the collection of resources and things that were a consequence of my diligent work and dedication to myself. Happiness was for me the end of the rainbow, not the happiness in the presence of this rainbow that I chose to follow. Saying all of this to say, if happiness isn't found in the mundane, in the imperfect, in the unknown, how will we truly trust the feelings of happiness once we reach our so-called peaks of life? If our happiness is always somehow dependent on something else outside of ourselves, I fear we risk never really feeling the raw power of our own true happiness and all of the vitality that it brings us in, inside of our body. So as you can tell, and I hope you can hear, a real rebirth has happened inside of me. And it's always fun when this happens. I get really excited about topics where I'm truly passionate about because the wisdom that comes with this awakening feels so natural and so helpful. And I know it feels like a large part of my calling to share this encounter with you. So this video will be a story time of an experience that I had last Saturday, or I'll say an encounter with what I felt truly was the frequency of divine happiness. Just as a warning, the feelings that I express during this topic may be perceived as woo-woo to some. But I think it's time that we speak openly and unapologetically about the spiritual experiences that are happening inside of our bodies. So when I speak about light codes and vibrations, it may go over some people's heads. 
But I think because it is the truth and because we are energetically in this era of truth and the veils have been fully lifted, it won't seem as taboo. Let's start this story with a prelude. Last week, I'll set the tone for you, it was a Friday. By that day, I'd already had five days of consistent working nonstop and I was looking forward to the weekend because I was off. And for people who work jobs with a seven-day schedule, isn't it so amazing when you have like just a day or a few days to yourself? I was excited. I had already made a gumbo that I was extremely proud of. By the way, I made a roux from scratch and although it was just my second time making a gumbo on my own, there was something super spiritual about just following my heart with the ingredients and the aroma of the Holy Trinity and the love and the labor that comes with making a dish like that. I just knew that maybe my ancestors were proud of me for doing that. I even made a post about it on my story and my cousin reached out to me and said that she was proud of me. So, hey, Perry. Anyway, um, I knew that I was going to enjoy that dish over the weekend and I was just in gratitude for setting myself up for a weekend full of nothingness. I think so often I would judge myself by the way I chose to rest. Like people don't understand the joy of nothingness. We take it for granted and I think so often we get wrapped up in the performance of rest and I even, I would get wrapped up in the doing and saying, maybe I should do a routine or use this moisturizer and this scrub and all of these things and factors and products that truly had nothing to do with my happiness, my rest, or were able to enhance those things. I think the consumer in my mind used to take over, but this time, this time was different. I just didn't care. I think I was just too tired to. I could tell something was brewing and something was different. You know, when the weeks are rough and you spend silent moments in the hard times, speaking up prayers about the things that you wanted and how you wanted things to go. And after I do those things, I like to just wait quietly to see if I have signs um, and often when that happens, it brings me into a hyper awareness where I'm like trying to find a sign in anything. Hold on to that. Cause that's going to make sense. So this Friday mid afternoon, I had finished teaching a class or two, and I was curious with what I was going to be doing with the rest of my day. I recently bought a coloring book full of flowers and some fresh color pencils that I only use once. And I was just ready to turn on some cartoons and just exist in my younger self and just allow her to actually rest. I think what I'm discovering most about myself is that a lot of my downtime is spent doing things my younger self enjoyed because I realized I'm finally in an environment where she isn't in fight or flight or pretending that her silence was peace. Now in her silence, she can truly exist in peace and not allow the actions of others to ruminate in the mind and cause bad thoughts or insecurities about herself. I think I've actually become a person that my nine-year-old self and my 14-year-old self would just love to be around and I take extreme pride in that. So whatever she wants, she gets. And in the back of my mind, when I got home, I was like, oh wait, I have CBD gummies. <laughs> that I've never tried before. I had them from an event that my friend invited me to. It was a wellness facility in North Austin. And this was going to be my first time having an edible. And this was a real basic thought. When I was younger, I used to smoke, but I became too sensitive to it. So it's honestly no longer in me. As in, I haven't smoked habitually in like six years at this point. But I thought, hmm, maybe this will help me relax or get me in a deeper place of relaxation. Because I don't know if you can tell by the way that I think and the things that I say and share, I'm always thinking. And sometimes that awareness doesn't necessarily 
give me a direct path to rest. So I got this tiny sample of a gummy with 15 grams of CBD. There was like two in a pack and I only took one. And then I got in the shower and everything felt fine. Everything was normal. And then I got out and I finally got in my bed and I started my coloring book. And all of a sudden I felt my heart rate rise and I did not like that. <laughs> And because I became aware of it, I tried to shift my focus to other things like topics I wanted to talk about on my channel, different creative ideas that inspired me. And all it did was brought me into a happiness that made me excited and hype, which made my heart flutter even more. And I got more and more aware of this feeling and it was so intense and abnormal for me that I silently began to panic. <laughs> So this girl, who had already just got out of the shower and put on all of her lotions and her moisturizers and creams, then put herself back into a cold shower because she just could not chill. And I needed to come down. The feeling was just too much. I was struggling because I was too early in the process of the high and I knew I wasn't coming down anytime soon. So I knew I fucked up. Luckily, there was someone home, so I hear my boyfriend speaking on the phone with his friend like normal, but he's speaking to his friend from back home, and he's not speaking English, and I'm hearing what is complete gibberish to me, and I start to, like, panic some more, and then I get extremely embarrassed, and my own thoughts were bringing me into this panic, but I could not control my thoughts. I felt so unsafe and vulnerable in my own body and it was scary for me. This is how I know, you know, certain things are for certain people. That thing is not for me and whatever, you know, I, I want to say it's a mistake, even though it's something that I did, I thought that I could handle it, but it's obvious that I can't. It is what it is. But anyway, I felt unsafe. I felt extremely vulnerable and this scared me. So much that our dog could sense my heart rate and frantically starts barking at me, which scares me even more that she could recognize something was wrong. As much as I was embarrassed and I was afraid to, I asked my boyfriend to walk outside with me because I just didn't feel well. It felt close to the feeling you get before you're about to faint. Like everything was closing in. I was running out of time, it felt, and I just had to go outside. So... Sure enough, I walked and he followed me, confused. So let me paint the picture for you. I'm completely drenched from this cold shower that I just went to. I wrap myself in a t-shirt over my head and I put on a random set of clothes and I just walked out the door. I rushed out of the door. And I just thank God that he was there and my boyfriend was there because honestly, after I told him what happened and because he knew I don't usually partake in those things ever, he was so gentle with me and said all of the things to calm me down and to help me put words to what I was feeling um, so that my worry would just kind of subside. And I really appreciated that. And uh, yeah, so we walked for a while and then we finally went back inside, even though I was resisting it because I just felt like the apartment felt dense and humid and I just needed to feel free. I needed to be in an open space. So I compromised for just being on the balcony and on the balcony, we were able to have this very meaningful conversation for us and say things that needed to be said for us and our friendship and our relationship. I think because I was in such a vulnerable space, it broke the ice for a conversation that needed to be had. Have you ever been in prayer and hoped that the spirit is working in your partner or your friends or your family in the ways that he's working in you? There was a time where I just had to stop forcing spirituality into this bond I wanted to have with my partner because, okay, regardless of whether or not the people we love are able to recognize it, they belong to the divine just like we do. And it is not our job to force our experiences 
or our relationship or our journey on them because one, we stress ourselves out and two, it's not what we are called to do. So I need to release control because I was starting to look like an asshole or everything about that ego-filled, helpful person that is more dedicated to forcing the agenda of deep relationship with Source than actually listening and relating to the person that they're talking to. But moving on. With everything that was shared, it was proven to me that something was happening. Maybe not necessarily in the same ways that has happened to me, but it was something significant. And because I know God is over all of my situations and all of my relationships, I think he was able to bring conversation into my partner's life in a way that he would be able to understand so that he can come into this new awareness and awakening on his own. And because of this awakening, he was able to teach me something about myself that I probably would not have ever recognized on my own. It was him coming to his own awareness enough to have words and dialogue about his feelings that was able to push me forward and to teach me, teach me ways to love better, to see myself clearly. And I think this is why community and relationship building is so important because it is such a vehicle for transformation and growth and if we close ourselves to it and we run away from the hard doings and the hard conversations we in so many ways miss our ascension so to be able to witness this expression of our true feelings brought me into this divine space of gratitude and love and overall blissful happiness that was calm and opening and Although getting there was tough and weird inside of my body, I have to admit, because of the level of vulnerability that the experience before brought me, I was in a space where I could listen more effectively and outside of my ego and my wanting to be righteous and truly see this person enough to love him in the way that God loves him. And in that reconciliation, I guess, my feelings of gratitude overflowed into this happiness. It was that although I hated how the afternoon started, I had to be in that state to really be able to consume and see clearly everything that I needed to raise my level of consciousness in my relationship. And I felt so much gratitude and so much happiness that I felt my entire body starting to vibrate. I could feel the center of my palms tingle in this cool vibration, if I'm being specific, under the skin of my hands and the skin of my feet. It felt like a chill tingling sensation and then the wind would blow and then I just felt this real presence of love so much that my dog starts going crazy and she jumps on me and she gives me all of this love and the kiss attacks that I call it. But I think it was her acknowledging this frequency as well. And it left me so curious about biological rhythms, brain waves, cellular vibrations, and heart rate variability. And just overall, the definition of happiness changed for me. I went on YouTube and I looked up happiness and I came across a video about the happiest places to live in the world. And I think it was Denmark or Finland or both. And they spoke of all of the things that their government prioritizes that makes living more suitable for a healthy and balanced life. They prioritize living a fulfilling life. Their education system and their medical aid are provided for by the government, which is where their taxes go to. And there are no extreme wealth gaps. And although the population is very small in comparison to America, and the diversity is little to none, they live in a system that assures that through all journeys of their life people are supported or provided for there thus building community and building productivity the people there want to work because they know that they are part of a system that works for them 
And after seeing this, I just start thinking to myself of this dream America that wasn't built off of exclusion and racial bias, where the people who were given responsibility over this land by the divine stayed in their power. And maybe we built the foundation of our government systems with the earth's vitality and resources at the center. And I could escape in this fantasy all day long about how this perfect world would be and what if claiming ignorantly like I know the perfect answer to what would make a world great but I can say that there are a lot of ways that America is contributing to my madness and poisoning my body and my mind with ways that keep me sick and it's my job to, instead of having more dialogue about the things that are not working, like the real estate market or the education system, the job market, the inflation, a radical act of resistance is using my discernment and making healthy choices regardless and choosing not to engage with the nonsense and instead of existing in joy and staying in the frequency of happiness to bring the wisdom that comes with it because if we're choosing to stay in fight or flight or in the victimhood at the hands of the people that make these poor systems, we are not able to become the problem solvers of this world. We never really see clear enough to bring about change so it all really starts with us. And I want to say it is a revolutionary act to find happiness and to rest in a world that is obviously wanting to work us into oblivion. And I want to say, so if you're trying to work yourself outside of the matrix, the best way to do that is to work within on a soul level and get curious about the frequencies of our emotions like happiness, like something as powerful as happiness and love, and to find ways to alchemize all of these emotions for our good, and truly discover your power as a spirit, but also as a human being, so we can bring about change like we should. Um, yeah, I think that is all that I have for today. Thank you so much for making it this far and watching this video. It means so much to me. What did you think of this topic? Did it go completely over y'all's heads or is it something that you'd like to dive into a lot more? If so, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri. And you can also download this episode on Spotify podcast at the Ron Half podcast. Leave a review if you're in the spirit of sharing. Um, it really helps out a lot. Download an episode or two. And um, yeah, thank you so much. I love you guys. I will see you all in my next one. Bye.